Hey, hey everybody, it's Overkill here with another video for the German Army Project for Warlord Games Bolt Action. So, today we're doing another unboxing and review of the German Fallschirmjäger box set. And as you can see on the box, uh, you get 30 hard plastic 28mm multi pose miniatures of the World War II German Airborne, of course, if you didn't know what the Fallschirmjäger were. Um, as it says on the box, these models are appropriate for mid and late war, but um, you can get away with um, painting these as early. Uh, I'm sure people wouldn't really mind. These are the only plastic Fallschirmjäger, um, and you can even see on the box and the leaflet that comes in this that there are examples, not on the box, but on the leaflet, um, they have some painted for earlier uh, war situations. So yeah, uh, this is the box. On the back, we have some examples of some painted models, and they look quite nice. Uh, and then, of course, there's also the sprues in the background. Uh, some examples are just showing you what some things that you get. So this box includes enough plastic components to make 30 German airborne miniatures. Includes a host of options to allow for different uh, weapon configurations and command models. Equipment included are Fallschirmjäger, uh, uh, Fallschirmgewehr 42 assault rifles, so FGs. Um, Panzerfaust, Car 98Ks, MP40s, MG42s, and stick grenades. Beautiful. We have ra enough round plastic bases for everybody. Uh, full color water slide decal sheet, which is this. And a uh, construction leaflet. So there's a nice little description about the Fallschirmjäger there. Um, and like I said, more uh, models. And Warlord Games' uh, head swap system, um, which is quite nice. The, pretty much like, all of their models can swap heads with each other. It's not focusing. There we go. Um, which is pretty cool. So um, my Grenadier box and this box um, can fit t perfectly together and I've even actually used um, some bits on each other uh, for a couple of models that I've put together. So yeah, that's the box. I'm going to go ahead and put that right over here. And we're going to take a look at what you get. So first off, we have uh, the decals. Now uh, these have little insignias and stuff on them. Uh, if it would focus... Come on, focus on this, not the stuff in the background. There we go. Um, so you can see there's little uh, things to put on the helmets, armbands. Um, it's actually really hard to even see the detail by eye. Um, that's how small some of this stuff is, but it's a bunch of different things depending on what regiment or division, anything that you want to base your Falsham Jaeger on. These are the things to do. Um, I'm, I've am i like never used decals, so I'm kind of reluctant to possibly ruin models with this, so you, know, you never know. Um, you then get th probably the most important part of the set is this leaflet um, and that shows all of the components and they're all labeled because uh, as I'll show in a second when we get to the sprues Warlord Games' bolt action models are very complicated to put together in some situations for new people that is um, if you've been making models for years it's not that big of a deal but it can still be a little bit tricky um, because the uh, for a lot of um, for a lot of models the two arms and a gun are all separate pieces, whereas most model games you at least have the gun in one hand and then maybe the other one has to go on it, but a lot of games have like single piece models for stuff like that. But in a lot a, a lot of Warlord Games' um, World War II models, you have to put one arm on, the other arm on, and put the gun in them. And that can lead to some really wonky looking models. Um, some aren't holding the gun properly, some have, some have the gun like levitating off the, sec uh, the left hand. Um, it gets pretty weird, the decals are stuck to me. That was... <laughs> But yeah, um, thankfully for uh, the newer models, they're starting to do both hands, or at least one hand, holding the weapons, which is really nice. But yeah, there's that. And then the cool part about it is it shows a bunch of examples of not just um, painted ones, but like different different uh, theaters and everything. So it's just a bunch of like historical stuff and little blurbs about their, what they're carrying and all that stuff. But as I said, here's an early war, uh, Fallschirmjäger. So th this box just proves that you can paint them that way and they'll look fine. Uh, there's an Easter Front one, or just a winter, you know, could be Western Front during like the Ardennes Offensive or something like that, I don't know. And then we have uh, Mediterranean, so Africa, um, Italy, all that kind of stuff. Very cool. And then the rest are just generic Western Front, um, but they look really nice. Uh, it's not really focusing that well. But yeah, there we go. So that's the little extra bits that you get. So now we can move on to the sprues, the part that everybody actually ca uh, cares about. So this is one sprue that you get. 
Um, there's five of these. You have six bases, so that gives you your 30 bases. And on the sprue itself, we have a few pieces. So we have uh, two hands, one's pointing. One's pointing and one has a stick grenade. We have a bandolier for rifles. Uh, actually, no, that would be a bandolier for the FG-42. These two are for FG-42s. Um, we have some personal kit for the models. And then we have uh, rifle bandoliers, which are pretty cool. And, of course, uh, Warlord game bases, which are really nice. So that's that sprue, pretty simple. And then we have the actual main body of the set. Um, there's, uh, again, six of these. No, five of these, rather, because there's six bodies. So that gives you your 30 models. Uh, if we take a look from this side onwards, we can see uh, six pieces of personal kit, which is nice. You always love getting these pieces because you can put them all over the models if you so wish. Um, down here we have a... Um, the camera will focus. There we go. We have a hand holding binoculars, a hand with the Panzerfaust, and a bag of stick grenades. Uh, more personal kit, an arm holding another bag of stick grenades, and MP40 pouches. Here we have some um, FG42 pouches, I believe. Uh, an FG42 itself. I think it's still focused on the box behind it. Let me just uh, put that down. Yeah, so an FG42. A arm holding an MP40 with a sling that would go around the model's neck. Um, we have a loose car 98 that could be used as uh, either, you know, advancing, just firing it, or it could be slung over the back of a model because of that sling. That's a very nice touch. Thank you, Warlord. Uh, we have a carrying hand. You can use that hand to ha carry like any of the guns that are loose on the sprue. Uh, personal equipment, and then more bandoliers, maybe, I think. Uh, we then move on to the model poses. So here. We have um, two standing poses. One's a bit uh, hunched over, like he's about to start uh, advancing, while this one's a bit more sturdy. I, uh, I like using poses like this to actually have uh, models standing up and firing, because they're a bit more rigid. Looks like they're actually bracing themselves. Here we have two knel uh, kneeling down models. One's on both knees, one is on one knee. Uh, very uh, unique pose. I've never seen a model um, from Warlord Games have this kind of pose where he's on two knees. It's always ever been this. Um, so that's quite nice. A prone model would have been very appreciated. Um, the early war Germans, the Blitzkrieg box have them, the Soviets have them, and maybe another box have a prone model. Um, prone models are amazing because it makes machine gun teams really easy to make. Um, whereas with this they're all going to be either advancing or firing from the hip, which is a bit ridiculous for an MG42 if we're honest. Um, and then we have two uh, sprinting poses, which are very nice, very good uh, uh, sense of movement in the sculpts here. We have an arm holding an FG-42 with a bandolier attached to it, and the arm that would support it. And then we have an MP-40 with an arm supporting it. Um, very nice, very nice um, modeling on this weapon. Um, really like how that turns out when you put it on someone. Here's an arm, uh, or here's a set of arms holding a MG-42. Sorry, you're not really. There we go. Um, so he'd be walking around with it. Um, Here's someone reloading a Car 98, so that's nice. Uh, two arms to hold another Car 98, a loose Panzerfaust, uh, another FG-42, and the arm to hold that. And then we have uh, two arms here and here for a, another Car 98. And then someone carrying an MG-42 over their shoulder and a ammo box in the other hand, which is very nice. We have an extra little box here. I'm not quite sure what that's for. And then we have a belt of MG42 ammo to go around the neck of a of a soldier, which is really nice. These are really cool to have. Uh, and then finally, we have the heads. So if I get this close to the camera, and hopefully get it to zoom uh, to focus, maybe focus a bit better than that. There we go. You can see. Um, let me see if I can change the lighting a little bit and hopefully get better focus. There we go. Uh, you can see all the nice detail in these models. Uh, lots of different helmets with different coverings and stuff. A officer's head. Um, this is my favorite head because I don't know if you can quite see, but he actually has a cigarette in his mouth. Um, that's that line going down right there. He has a cigarette in his mouth. like it's um, It's like he's just barely supporting it, so it's going down over his lip, which is quite cool. Uh, and then we have more helmets and field caps, which is really nice. So yeah, that is the sprues, guys. So I'll just put this box back up. Uh, and now I have a full sprue of models to show you. So this is going to be six models. 
um, which I finished. And yeah, uh, we're going to put the camera on continuous focus as opposed to locked like it was. And let's take a look at these guys. So there's six of them, as I said. This is a full sprue of models. Um, you can definitely get way more poses out of the box than what I did. Um, and with the other models that I'm going to be making, they will also be different. But here's the first one I made. Uh, just to be safe, I made just an advancing um, <laughs> an advancing Fallschirmjäger with an FG42. Uh, let me see if I can fix the lighting a little bit so that it's not so... Okay, there we go. So it's not so yellow. And yeah, here he is. Just excellent detail all around, uh, especially on the uniform of these guys. They're, um, the jump smock of the Fallschirmjäger is really, really nice. And uh, just the, the models in general look really good. Um, definitely some of the best looking World of Games models that I own. So that's him. We then have this Advancing Soldier, which is, my fa I think, one of my, maybe my second favorite or maybe my favorite model out of the bunch. Um, so he's, he's advancing forward, bandoliers on his chest carrying his FG-42 in one hand, carrying a Panzerfaust and some grenades in the other hand. Uh, he's in a real hurry, possibly chasing after tanks or something. Uh, I really love the sense of movement in this model. Uh, it really feels like he's urgently moving around, redeploying himself. My second favorite model out of the six is definitely this guy, uh, who I gave the sprinting body and the um, outreached uh, MP-40. So it just really rela really relates itself to like a scene out of a movie or something where uh, a soldier is <laughs> just gets uh, all of a sudden really brave or really stupid and just runs out just yelling. Just you can see I, ga I even gave him the uh, the head with the open mouth. Again, it's lo it's focusing on the box. So I'm just I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that um, for your guys' sake and my own. Um, but yeah, you can see he has his mouth open. Again, with the with these uh, with the color of the plastic, it's really hard for some cameras to pick up uh, some of the details. I guess that's that's the trouble I'm having right now. But here's another one. Uh, he's on both knees, taking some accurate fire with his FG42. He has his eye up to the scope. Uh, he's getting ready to uh, put down some suppressive fire on someone, whether it be uh, British, American, even Russians. Who knows? Uh, we then have, well, I'll leave him for last because he's a bit special. We then have uh, another kneeling down soldier who is uh, reloading his rifle. Uh, I'm not, I, I don't know the term for what it's actually called when you pull back the bolt. Um, you can say pull back the bolt, I suppose, but, you know, there's a, I, I think there's a real word for it. Uh, like, it's not activating. Um, it's something, either way. Uh, he's doing that. Really like the, just, you know, it looks natural. It looks like you know, somebody would actually be doing this. And that's the cool thing about Warlord Games models is um, if you do pay attention to how you're putting them together, you can get some really amazing realistic poses, which I really appreciate because uh, with the new models, that is, because um, their actual here infantry I got like three years ago in the um, D-Day starter set. Some of the poses look really unnatural, um, which is a bit of a shame, but these models are bloody amazing. Um, and here's the officer. So I can either use this guy as just a squad leader, um, but honestly, with the way he looks, I'm probably going to make him a Leutnant or an Oberleutnant, um, who is your army leader, essentially, um, because he looks a bit too special to be just a squad NCO. But then again, um, it is the Luftwaffe, not the army, so I mean, like, any NCO could be wearing uh, these caps, I suppose. Um, but yeah, he'll, he'll probably end up as an NC as a as a you know, an army leader as opposed to a squad leader. But he's pretty cool pointing out because, of course, all officers in uh, model wargaming need to be pointing. That's just a rule. You got you have to do that. And he's holding an MP40 that's uh, slung over his neck, which is really nice, and he has a bunch of personal kit on him. But, yeah, that is them. So if I quickly um, take a look at the Fallschirmjäger section in the Armies of Germany book, which is here. Um, there we go. If I quickly take a look at that... I can tell you that the Luftwaffe are definitely an interesting squad to have in your army because the Fallschirmjäger uh, late war squad um, is a veteran infantry squad for 65 points. This is, uh, by the way, if you're not into bolt action, I would recommend not maybe not watching this video unless you're interested um, in wa in learning the game. But it's a veteran infantry squad for 65 points. It is one NCO and four men. 
uh, they all have rifles. So the options you can have are add up to five additional men with rifles at 13 points each. The NCO and up to six men can have submachine guns instead of rifles for three points each. The NCO and up to nine men, so the entire squad, can have assault rifles instead of rifles for five points each. Up to two men can have a light machine gun for 20 points. For each light machine gun included, another man becomes the loader. And up to four men can have a Panzerfaust in addition to other weapons for five points each. So what this is saying is if you made a 10-man squad and you wanted to maximize what they have, um, this is only six. So imagine there's four more guys. They all start off with rifles. You can give four guys Panzerfausts. You can give two guys MG42s. Um, you can give 10 guys assault rifles, so um, for so FG-42, so there'd be like 10 of these guys. Um, they can all have rifles, or six of them can have SMGs. Fallschirmjäger are extremely versatile. Um, they can fill the role of any elite infantry in the German army. Um, SS, and um, the only reason you would ever want SS over Fallschirmjäger really is for the fanatics rule, which makes them a bit of a better fighter. Um, if you understand the lingo of bolt action, that is. But, uh, like, for a general purpose infantry, Fallschirmjäger are bloody amazing. Um, that's why a lot of people like playing Fallschirmjäger only armies. Um, whereas I'm going to be mixing Grenadiers and Fallschirmjäger into the same army. Um, because, you know, reasons. Because I like, I think they're cool. But yeah, guys, that has been the review and unboxing of the German Fallschirmjäger for uh, Bolt Action. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and a comment down below, as always. And if you're enjoying this series, make sure you subscribe, because there's going to be more as I keep working on these models. So thank you guys for watching, and uh, I will see you next time. Goodbye.